being fundamentally, fundamentally sound every play and just staying locked in. But I do feel like I'm playing better and better uh, each week, for sure. He's not afraid to criticize you guys. So what, what's it feel like when you hear that the head coach is talking you up like that as much as he has been? Uh, it's, it's great. It's, you also know that um, he, he does get on you about you know, just everything. So you can't always just take in the positives all the time because you know you always got to stay on top of your game. You never can get too high. You never can get too low. You like how did last year help you? Last year helped me a lot. It helped me with um, just mentally. That's something I really needed help with. Um, just guys like Roby helped me with the mental game and just film watching, get my body right. So last year helping, uh, watching Roby, that really helped me a lot. I mean, for sure. Urban is not a fan of redshirting as a, as a rule. Um, and I'm sure you probably came in thinking you were going to play last year, right? Right. Uh, what kind of mindset did it take to kind of get over that hurdle and say, okay, this is probably for the best? Um, yeah, it was it was definitely something I had to talk with Coach Combs about, just like because it was the first time I never really played and had to sit and watch guys. So it was a humbling experience, and it's something like I really had to sit with uh, Coach Combs about and uh, had uh, sit and sit-ins with Coach Meyer about. And um, it was something I knew would take patience. And um, now I'm at this point, which is great. So. Do you think if you had been forced in last year, you'd be having the success you're having now? I don't think so. I think um, I needed to have. Um, you know, time to sit and watch guys and really learn from them to be uh, successful this year, for sure. What stands out about Indiana on offense? Uh, really everything. They're, um, they got a great running back, obviously. He's uh, having a great year. He had just 300 yards rushing in the past game. So they're, uh, they're a well-balanced offense. They can run, they can pass. They got a great receiver in Shane Wynn as well, who's gonna, um, we're going to really need a game plan for, too. So we're going to have to be on our A game to beat Indiana, for sure. I know that you've had a connection with Ohio State going back to your childhood, and that was a big thing in your recruiting process. But Ohio State's made a recent attempt to establish itself in Jersey. I mean, what do you remember about being pulled from that area um, you know, as a prospect from that area? And has Ohio State's coaching staff approached you or anything about how to you know, maybe attack that area? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean. As far as recruiting with Ohio State, I feel like I recruited them more than they recruited me. I was going to camps here since I was in seventh grade, as you guys know. And um, it was a, this is a place that I really wanted to come to. Um, and so I feel like I'm one of those first guys from New Jersey, you know, the Malcolm Jenkins and then me, uh, you know, Ohio State really started recruiting. So now they're seeing that they, uh, New Jersey has talent. Um, so I feel like we're definitely starting to recruit New Jersey a lot harder. I kind of like that, you know, that and area like is that, kind yeah. of becoming an emphasis. Obviously, uh, Larry Johnson is somebody who, who has gone that area. I mean, yeah. how talented is that area and how exciting is it maybe for you to be one of the first of what's becoming a trend? Very talented area for sure. New Jersey, I feel like, uh, rivals anybody as far as football talent, especially, you know, down south. Uh, we're definitely getting a lot of guys recognition for sure, and even up north too. We got guys like Darius Slade, Noah Brown, who's on the team from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely getting recognition, which is a great thing for us. For sure. Why isn't Rutgers better? Though? Why isn't Rutgers better? Yeah. Um, shoot, I don't know. It could be a combination of many things. They definitely have the talent for sure. I mean, did, did they, do they recruit Jersey very well? They try to. That's one thing. Rutgers, when they was trying to recruit me, they was like, if we can get every guy, every guy from Jersey to come here, we're going to be a great team. And I believe that if Rutgers could get everybody, that they would be a great well, team. What's crazy sure. is I think I read a stat that of the top 20 players in Jersey a month ago, that they have zero commitments. Yeah. Why do you think that that program has a hard time getting guys that, you know, the most elite prospects? Yes, I think that's the biggest problem with their program right now. Is right. That they can't, they're having a really hard time recruiting their own territory. I don't know. I feel like uh, young guys like me have a big dream and they want to go to like big, huge schools that can like have national attention and make it to the championship games. That's one thing I feel like. And um, Rutgers probably isn't really there right now. So like um, kids like me want to go to top programs that can really produce like championship level type hey, of football. How well aware are you guys, our younger guys on this team in terms of like the senior class here? I don't have a Big Ten championship right now. Yeah. And I don't think that's happened since like 1989 for a four-year group to leave without a championship. How, how aware are younger guys on this team of that? Oh, yeah, that's something I'm definitely really aware, aware of. Like, I really love this senior class. I have uh, great relationships with them. And, um, it's something that you just really, really want to get for them, uh, get that championship ring. That's something you've worked uh, hard for uh, leading up to the season and everything. So that's something I'm definitely trying to do personally to uh, help with the team. 
Uh, for sure, for the seniors. What, yeah. what is it about this senior class? What stands out about them in your opinion, Eli? Just everything. Personality-wise, they're a great, uh, great uh, bunch of guys. Duran Grant, everybody. Uh, Curtis Grant, Devin Smith, they all have great personalities, and they've all uh, helped me mold as a player for sure. And um, they're all just really, really great guys, fun to be around. Hey, Eli, you said that Indiana has a strong passing game, but they're down to their third-string quarterback. How hard is it to get a read on him considering that he hasn't played the whole season and he's only had one game where he's passed more than he's run? Right. I mean, it is tough to get a read because there's not really too much film on him, so you can't really study, like, the little tendencies that you may have. So, like, we're just going off of just uh, the whole offensive tendencies and trying to get a, a feel for that. Are you guys – having any fun with the fact that this is a guy who, I mean, he's a quality football player, obviously, and his offensive coordinator says he's got a little Johnny Manziel in him, but he's also a former male model. Former male model? He didn't did know that? I didn't know that. No, this <laughs> news, news to you? Yeah. Okay. But, but is that something that you can have fun with? Uh, not really. I mean, I guess that's something you could use as far as trash talking, but I'm, I'm probably going to stay away from that. I'm probably going to just, I'm just focused on the football side of it and try to stop them football-wise. Hey, Eli, you hey. said you watched Bradley Roby a lot last year. Right. What did you learn from him? What did I learn from him? Yeah. Just like his intensity that he brings into the game, uh, just the way he uh, mentally approaches it and physically approaches it as far as just uh, playing every play like it's his last. And just he just goes out there with like an extreme ruggedness and that's something I admire a lot and try to implement in my game. Awesome. How do you guys talk? Uh, I talk to him about every other week. Just text him, and I've seen him a couple of times too because he's come to a couple of the games. So I try to text him just, you know, out of the blue, just ask him little questions. Hey, Eli, is it common for you Last guys to, to hear from uh, fans via social media after games? Is that common? Oh, that's very common. Fans always either tweet at me or tweet about me or tweet to my mom um, <laughs> constantly after the game. So it's something I've definitely gotten used to. Were you guys aware cool of with. what was being said to Jalen after the game and, and what's your reaction to that? Oh, uh, yeah, we was aware of that. And um, that's something that we just try to support Jalen about and just, you know, hug him up about. I mean, we all get uh, tweets like that. You know, I've gotten tweets like that, too. Nobody's really come to my aid about it. But um, <laughs> you know, as a corner, when you do get beat, you definitely get that uh, negative attention. So it's something I try to help Jalen out with because I've known from experience. For the first sure. time you got it, did it surprise you? I mean, that what? people would say some of the things? Oh, no, definitely not. I, that's something coming into the season I knew was going to happen. So, like, that's something me and my parents talked about. Just, like, you just got to stay in your own.